why 343 is holding strong on no map voting in the MCC along with some changes and potential changes coming to the progression system on the MCC as well as the progress of Halo Reach Forge. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it greatly helps out the video and channel and keeps more people a chance to watch this video and stay up to date with everything going on in the community. So make sure to help support the channel that way guys. And if you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with everything going on in Halo, make sure you tap subscribe, keep yourselves up to date with everything going on. So recently, like I mentioned in the previous video, Postums put up an update about the MCC now this thing was so big I had to break this up into bite-sized pieces so this is the second video I'm making on this update in this video we're gonna be talking about why 343 is not going to be implementing map voting but they are hearing your choice your voices and we'll be certainly taking into consideration they might even possibly bring it back and we're also going to be talking about changes coming to the progression system as well as as discussed changes as well and let us know what they're thinking about when it comes to improving the progression system in the mcc and to finish it all off we're going to be talking about halo reach for the progress on that and what to look forward to when it does finally release for us all so let's jump right into the content here so first off, let's talk about map voting as it's been kind of been brought back up again as recently since the MCC's addition to, of Halo Reach. A lot of people have been playing Halo Reach, but they haven't really been feeling like they began the experience that they would like to have when it comes to playing this game. A lot of repeat maps, a lot of repeat game types, and people are kind of getting a little tired of playing the same maps over and over again. Understandably, now I kind of agree with a little bit of these frustrations as was uh, the weighting of the maps seems to be really be favoring uh, your vanilla maps and you don't really get a chance to play a lot of uh, maps that were maybe been created like in Forge or anything else that would actually help, you know, broaden your experience and make it a little bit more enjoyable. But uh, we've been kind of been playing a lot of the same maps over and over again. So people have been bringing this up. Why not bring back map voting? That's what MCC actually originally launched with, which it did seem to work out all right. But the, what basically happened was, uh, especially back in the day when you had mixed modes uh, for playlists, basically everyone just kept voting for Halo 3. And then you wouldn't get a chance to play any Halo 2 or CE or anything else because people just wanted to play Halo 3 the whole time. Understandably though, because I, in my opinion, Halo 3 is the best game in the Halo franchise, so I got to, you know, understandably both really popular people would want to play it. But now that we have the match composer though, it really kind of... Uh, really helps uh, specify people's experiences with this game and it really helps make it so you can play exactly what you want to play and how much of it you want to play. And honestly, I think map voting would be a pretty good thing to bring back into the game since now that we have the match composer. Uh, though 343 does mention about like the reason why they went with decided to remove map voting is because there was a big complaint about people taking too long the game between matches and why they want to just get more matches in and keep playing, understandably. And so they basically it's a double-edged sword of one edge, you get to have a much more personalized experience with the game. But then this other edge, it does take longer to get games. And from my experience, basically you keep playing the same like same you know maps over and over again. And also on top of that, if a lot of people will vote for map, and if they don't get a map, they'll back out of the game, and then you end up playing like a three v four or two v four or something like that. And so it can lend itself to not so great experiences where if you just throw people in the games, they're more likely to stay in it. Three four three even responds on this topic, saying that we've reviewed feedback via forums and servers and cross check our data for a better understanding of player behavior and desires on map selection. Voting systems tend to limit the map and game type pool and could result in increased user frustration. When players see the same options voted on or voted from one game to another, which could lead to additional quits and lopsided team starts, uh, we did observe similar side effects with the original map veto slash map voting system with the MCC, which eventually became a source of frustration for amongst a lot of players, which is very true. Ultimately, I think it'd just be fine if you just keep the same kind of you know quick matchmaking system, but then just kind of wait some maps a little bit better so then you're not playing the same things over and over again. It's a pretty easy fix. It doesn't involve a lot of effort, and I think as long as you voice your opinions on what you guys want to see, 
343 certainly will be willing to make those changes. Now, next on this list here, we're going to be talking about the progression system update that recently came to the MCC, as well as 343 has heard your voices, and players want to be more balanced metal values across games, faster progression, and have more choices on how to unlock items within the progression system, as we do know, just one after the other, rather than being able to pick and choose exactly what you want, which a lot of people do miss from the original Halo Reach unlocking system, which I know a lot of people would just say just copy and paste that over but it doesn't exactly transfer over between the other games they're trying to make a universal system that can work for all games and people are very similar to the season pass model that we've seen in multiple other games and so they're trying to bring it over to halo reach which i don't mind it it seems to be working out all right it is a bit grindy i would say but i guess it kind of depends on how long you expect people to play these games obviously i think each season if you have this is, is a free to, this is going to be a free option for people to play and unlock things that you might want to have it so then you unlock everything within that season within say a season and if there wasn't for the double xp two weeks and the one weekend as well i would definitely would be a much further back where i'm at right now i believe i'm at 84 four out of a hundred unlocks right now so i went hard on the double xp and if he doesn't if we didn't have that then i'd probably be even down in like the the 60s or maybe even the 50s oh god that'd be a rough time for sure but so 343 is looking to find ways to make this a little bit better experience for you so they brought in four different things they want to talk about for this so the first one here is we have expanded the ways in which our service configuration files can organize metal xp on a game mode and per game basis in the near term will be increasing the metal XP values for Halo 3 and adjusting firefight metal and caps to better align with an expected match length. Very good. You want to make sure that no matter what you're playing, you're dealing out the same amount of XP, so it comes down to more just preference of what you want to play rather than playing a mode specifically for the XP, much like how people have been grinding for 152 in Halo 5, trying to you know play a lot of rock and rail. Uh, people played a lot of like free for all SWAT or just SWAT in general in Reach. Uh, it's a really quick way to also gain your XP as well, so it'll look to kind of even out a little bit. Uh, number two on the list here, they're talking about for uh, the progression system changes, saying we will look into bumping the performance of teamwork XP caps and the XP awarded for teamwork medals. Obviously, more teamwork, the better better it would be more conducive and promote better gameplay with everybody so obviously you want that number three on the list here we are investigating a way to offer unlocks in any order within a page of tiers for halo reach season system a full store is out of scope for us at the time but this it seems like a short-term way to offer more options to unlock order going forward so it looks like they're going to continue with the linear progression but basically what you'll be able to do is within a page you'll be able to unlock different tiers you would want to unlock but basically it seems like once you unlock all 10 items within that uh, page then you move on to the next one so it's not going to be exactly pick and choose but you'll be able to at least kind of pick what you want within that page so it's a, a little bit of a give and take kind of thing as they mentioned like a possible store which actually be kind of an interesting choice for sure but it seems like that'd be a big overhaul when it comes to the ui unlock system then right now they're really just trying to get these games out for us to play on pc guys so uh, i wouldn't expect too many changes coming to the progression system but i think this is a good compromise for sure and lastly for number four on the options here uh, they brought they brought up challenges which is challenges are coming in the midterm adding challenges will allow flexibility to earn xp and rewards in scenarios that are not currently supported campaign games and custom games in addition to match made games so it sounds like finally we'll get a chance to possibly even get xp for campaign games which would be pretty freaking awesome. It gave me more incentive for sure to play the campaign. Say that you play a certain mission or do a certain thing within the campaign, you'll get some more XP. That'd be really beneficial because that helped out that grind when it comes to playing Halo Reach. And lastly, I'm sure you guys are really concerned about is what Forge is going to be like on PC for Halo Reach. It's uh, as it's still currently under development, at two and a half months in right now with this game. I was kind of hoping to be out a little bit sooner than it is, but I think the looking to do a bit more than just put it on pc as what they mentioned in the update they're looking to implement a all platform service when it comes to being able to 
download game modes and different maps. So basically, if you make it on Xbox, you can download it on PC. If you make it on PC, you can download it on Xbox. Kind of the same thing they did for Halo 5. Looking to do that for the MCC as well. Obviously, they need to implement some new uh, avenues for players to be able to have this option available for them. So there's a lot of uh, you know uh, infrastructure changes they need to make, and so that's why it's taking it a little bit longer. But basically, they're looking to do uh, that kind of cross-platform downloading kind of system. As well, they shared a screenshot here to kind of give you a little example of the, some of the new stuff that they're bringing into Forge as well. Uh, they do mention that the budget that's in this screenshot is actually a legacy budget. They're looking to actually increase that budget for the PC and Xbox One, or uh, you know, on the Xbox family, I should say, uh, to utilize the extra RAM and power that that has to offer. Uh, so, but it's going to be only an increase on Forge World and Tempest. And so keep that in mind as well, which are the two most commonly forged uh, maps to work on right there. So take that in consideration as well. There are no dates at the moment when it comes to this, but they said they are looking to share more info soon about Forge. So hopefully when they get this going, it'll hopefully bring more people back, make that user generated content, get more people excited to play Halo Reach on PC. And if you're excited about Halo coming to PC as well, make sure you tap that like button to get more people to get a chance to check out this video as well. If you want to stay up to date with anything going on within the Halo community, that's news, information, all that gameplay, commentary, all that great stuff, make sure you tap subscribe, guys. Keep yourselves up to date with everything going on in Halo. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right now, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.